Hi, Table Talk community. Uh, welcome back to the Table Talk. And today's Table Talk word for the day is a question from one of your peers and one of your community members and one of the people out of the group. I Let me say this. Thank you so much for the questions. The questions, not only they help me, they help uh, the others in the Table Talk community. Sometimes it's good to get positive antidotes from each other so we can utilize those antidotes and apply them to our symptoms in our lives so we can use them and we can thrive and we can grow and we can also share with other people. So the questions are really, they're actually a strength for me and strength for you guys and strength for, for one another. And that's how we stay connected. I love that we stay connected through questions. I love how we stay connected through comments and points of view. Sometimes you guys just share with me. You just want to talk. And let me tell you right now, I am a good listener. I love to listen because sometimes you want to have that shoulder to cry on. And right now dealing with this pandemic, I may not be there physically, but I'm there in a sense of spirituality. I'm there in a sense of me having a open understanding of where you're coming from and what's going on in your life and coming from a patient's point of view I absolutely understand where you're coming from so please share your comments subscribe uh, share your questions share your comments and we all answer them we all jump in with our our thoughts and our positive antidotes and our positive practices and our, our self-assessments of how we overcome things. And uh, we love to share here. This is perfect. This is the perfect place. That's why it is a table talk community. Put everything on the table. Don't be afraid. So our question for today, number one, thank you for the question. The question is, my depression keeps me isolated how can I handle this situation dealing with me and my family number one super awesome question and uh, I can give you a patient point of view in the response I give you because I suffer from depression and I talk about suffering from depression from early on when I was a uh, when I was a younger and from a teenage mother and I suffer from depression now as me being older and I also speak on how depression shifts from depression to deeper depression and then when you get into deeper depression it kind of shifts over into suicide ideations and then it sh shifts over to a uh, harmful strategies and then you want to you know uh, accept that invitation of harmful planning and I speak of that with the deep depression uh, tornado system theory that's in one of my books and uh, Actually, we're going to talk about that going forward. Uh, talking about the theory that I have one of those books, I, I don't, I don't expound on it because it's in the book. But now I'm going to start breaking it apart and start talking about it in stages, so we have a better understanding and a, a, a image of how mental illness look. Because if you have a mental illness. I want you to see mental illness as being a system. And if mental illness is a system, it has a pathology. And if it has a pathology, then it is on a assignment. And if it is on an assignment, it has an end game. And the end game for mental illness is to destroy you and or others it has that 
uh, pathway. And I speak about it. And when I speak about it, I bring an image to it inside the theory where it looks like a category five tornado system. And we'll talk about it going forward. It's a good theory and it, uh, it'll kind of give you a, a uh, image of how mental illness treats you, how mental illness behaves. So dealing with the question itself, depression, sadness is one of the big, big, big symptoms in depression and also self-loathing and also isolation. It takes you, it wants you to take you and separate you and keep you by yourself so it can continue to make you feel bad, to make your mood feel like no one's interested in how you feel, no one wants to hear how you are hurting. And it and depression does that. And the way I fight it is I start looking towards the good things in my life. And the good things in my life are in my future. The good things in my life are, wow, the things I change. The things I change is I'm going to be better in my eating habit. For me, I have an eating disorder and I'm going to be better in my eating habit. So I look forward to changing my life for the better. And when you start looking forward to doing good things going forward, you start getting your energy up. You start saying, wow, I can't wait till I get started. I can't wait till I just get the support from my family, letting them know that I'm ready to get outside, put my gym shoes on and start walking. I got my partner with me. My partner is on board and you start looking to the future and your future looks brighter and you start telling your depression, hey, I won't let you dictate how my future or how my today turns out. I won't let you control my trade of thought because that's what depression is. It feeds your thought nothing but depressed moods, depressed words, depressed. It never, if you notice, depression never gives you nothing good. It always gives you something that presses you down. Like, oh, no one's loving you. Oh, you never lose the weight. Oh, you'll always be this nobody. And once you take that thinking and turn it around for the better, it's almost like you tell depression, depression, I don't believe what you say about me. You are the liar. I'm better than that. I'm gooder than that. I can make it. I can lose the weight. I can graduate. I can finish this task. I can finish this agenda. I draw out for me. I made a list of things that I'm going to accomplish, my milestones. And I don't go far out. I do hourly milestones. I do daily milestones. And I conquer those milestones because if you start doing long drawn out milestones, it starts to look like really, uh, it's very so, it's hard. I was like, oh my God, this is hard. This is gonna take a week. Oh my goodness, I'm, I don't think I can do it. When you start doing daily milestones, like, you know what, today's the day. I changed my bedroom around, and that's what I did. I took everything out of my bedroom, I changed it around, I hung my pictures up differently, I changed my area rug, and I put some, I, I went to Target, purchased a bed in a bag, and I just changed my room, and I made it look like I just moved in. And you have no idea how much of my spirit just totally brightened up. I was like, oh my God, this is brand new. My room is brand new. And you feel that accomplishment. So then you turn around and you tell depression, hey, you were wrong about me. I can actually do things. I can actually accomplish things. I can actually make things happen for the good. 
So start grabbing agendas in your life. What is it that you want to do? You want to lose the weight? You want to change the color in your hair? You want to do simple things as brighten up your bathroom? Those little small changes mean something to you. So if it's meaning something to you, do those things. Get those things done and feel good about accomplishments that are small. You'll love it. You'll feel so good at put. I bought a shoe rack and I, it's like a HGTV shoe rack. I have like probably a hundred shoes and like a hundred gym shoes. And I put them in order, gym shoes at the bottom and then I put my dressy shoes at the top. And it looks so good and I feel so organized. You, you really, really start to feel like you're in control of yourself and depression has no control. Let depression know that it's not in control of you. So when it comes in with a depressed thought, you push back. Push back and say, nope, that's not me. Nope, I'm better than that. Yes, I can cook. And if I have a make small changes of just making spaghetti, uh, I said I can make spaghetti. I'm the best spaghetti maker in the world. And you start to build on that and grow on that. And before you know it, you are chef. You're the greatest. And keep that value. Start feeding yourself self-value. You are worth it. I put on my window, endurance is a skill. Because I would love to tell you that mental illness will go away, but it doesn't go away. So that means we have to strengthen ourselves, muscle ourselves up, and prepare ourselves for the fight and get up and tell depression, no, I'm better than that. No, you don't have control of me. And no, you take the back seat while I take the front seat because I'm in control of this. I'm running my life. And I start to uh, talk to my family and open that conversation up to my family and say, you know what? I got these things going on with me. And I want you to just listen. I don't want you to tell me how I should feel or how I should be or how I should just stop it. I don't want you to tell me any of that. I just want you to just listen. Because being a good listener and me just talking to you will be the will be the ultimate connection that I need to bring my family together. If you just have a better understanding of what's going on in, in my head. It's like two people in my head that I'm fighting. I don't need to fight with my family as well. So then having that connection. So uh, depression, you fighting that. And then your family. They have a sense of, they think you can just snap your fingers and get out of that mode. That is so not true. This is a task, it's a slow task, it's a slow process. It's a, it's a self-assessment process that you have to understand. And once you understand, you have to apply a positive practice and a positive antidote to that situation. And each situation is different. Depression comes as if it's a dark cloud that just hovers over your head and it's just a mood. You have to understand that I'm in it to fight. I need you to understand that those days that I'm depressed, I need kind of like a little bit of space so I can understand. And then let me come to you so you can have a better understanding after I get a better understanding. And that's, that's sometimes it's hard to do when, when you bring in your family in and you getting them to understand that this mental illness thing is, is very, very sensitive, is very, very real. And it's, and it's a fight that you can't just switch on and switch off like a light. I can't just run to a light and say depression switch off that doesn't happen but what I can do is I can do a self-assessment 
best apply, apply a positive antidote to those symptoms that I'm dealing with at that moment. And I can bring my mind to a balance. Bringing my mind to a balance means, hey, I can communicate to my family. Hey, I can talk to my kids. Because my mind is at a balance and I got clarity. And I know what's going on with me because I'm aware. And if I'm aware, then I can share it with you. So you got to give me a little bit of time. Give me a little, be patient with me. And that's what I speak to, uh, to this, uh, to our Table Talk community. Don't, don't be hard on yourself. Understand that depression, it attacks a lot of us. It happens to all of us. Be patient with yourself. Take, take your self-assessment and take the time to start figuring out the symptoms and understanding certain triggers in your life so you can apply positive antidotes. When you start applying positive antidotes, then you can say, hey, I got a handle on this. So I'm able to sit down and talk to my partners and my families and say, hey, Depression has me self-loathing. Depression has me devalued. So I have to fight this. And believe it or not, sometimes it feels like it's a lonely fight. Even though you have a family, you have your family with you, it feels like a lonely fight. But it's not a lonely fight. You have your tabletop community, you have your family, you have everyone on your site saying you can do it and you have us to fight with you. We believe in you. You are not what depression says you are. You're bigger than that and you're better than that. And we'll see you on the other side of success because that's where you're headed. So to this, to this question, Take your time, understand your symptoms, start applying practices, positive practices to your symptoms. If you can partner with a counselor, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. But then also do your self-assessments on every day. Your self-assessments every day are important because they are bringing you into awareness of what's going on in your daily life, what triggers you in your daily life. I have a journal. Let's start writing things down and making sure we are aware of what goes around us. And then we can keep talking about depression because depression has many, many, many symptoms that are attached to them. Self-loathing, uh, sadness, isolation, all of those are separate things, but then depression uses those symptoms and attack us all at once because the ultimate goal is Mental illness wants us to have an irresponsible response. Irresponsible responses when you're dealing with depression is, I want to detach. I want to detach from people. I want to detach from my family. I want to detach and be alone. Once I get you alone, that's when I can really have you to think about harming yourself, taking those pills, really doing some danger. I tell you right now, you have Table Talk community to talk to. Reach out to us, we're absolutely good listeners. Reach out to your counselor. Reach out to 911-311. Don't accept the message that's in your mind. Don't accept that. Reach out to someone. Accept those options. Listen to those options. You can make it, you're worth it, you're worth it. I'll say that one again. You're absolutely worth it. Your life is worth living. We'll continue this conversation. If you want to expound on this question, let me know. Subscribe to me and we'll continue this conversation because depression is a, is a, deeper, a deeper conversation than just uh, isolation. So we'll continue the talk. Uh, let's talk about it. Go ahead and suit some comments. Everybody throw in your points of view if you want to. Subscribe. 
throw in more questions and we'll continue to live and we'll continue to thrive with mental illness. We're thriving with mental illness. We are thrivers. We are the ones that are fighting back and we are the ones that are giving mental illness a black eye. Until next time, stay safe, stay inside, stay healthy.